Motors, welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. That was a 2010 Jeep Patriot. Imagine that, another Jeep video. I'm gonna change this into the Jeep channel. Uh, this thing came in, money lights on, traction lights on. We took and pulled the codes out of it, and as you can see here, it's having some crank sensor issue. Uh, so we got the 339 for intermittent crank signal, the 335 for crank sensor circuits, uh, 315 for no crank sensor learned, and then a multiple misfire. Uh, the ABS light is on because the engine light is on. So the ABS with the traction control utilizes inputs from the engine and when that's goofed up, well, it shuts down the traction control portion of it. So that's it there. I can only assume we're having some kind of problem with the crank sensor. Now this is a four wheel drive off-road model and the crank sensor is, is bared. You can't even see it. It's behind the power transfer unit. There's a heat shield there. Uh, we picked it up to try to give just visual inspection before we do anything and you can't you can't see anything you can't see the connector nothing so at this point uh we're gonna go right to the ecm we're gonna scope this crank signal see what it looks like if it is is there the car does start runs uh, we didn't warm it up we just started driving inside there's no extended crank nothing to give you any kind of indication that there is a problem but that's where we're at so the ecm lives right here so it's not too bad to get to i believe it's going to be in this connector and i grabbed this a wiring diagram and I'm hopeful to get the crank in both cam signals. Now we looked at service data to see what code criteria was, and it's basically, you know, a malfunction in the in the crank sensor, whether the signal's intermittent, it's lost its five volts, it's lost its, you know, sensor ground, you know, something is happening there. Now I did notice uh, looking on the diagram that the uh, camshaft, both intake and exhaust camshaft, they share, share the same sensor ground. Uh, or at least the um, whatever cam sensor this is, cam sensor one, I don't know if that's intake, that utilizes the same ground as the crank sensor and then the five bolt reference is shared on you know crank sensor two or cam sensor two in the crank sensor. So there is some, some sharing they have going on there. Uh, I would assume if we had a problem with the signal ground on this crank sensor, there would also be a problem with this cam sensor circuit potentially uh, of course you know can always break it a splice like I say unfortunately we can't can't really get to it which is kind of the kind of the piss pot we're gonna see what's happening up to here and if our signals you know pooched up here at that point we're gonna have to get some permission from the customer to you know tear into it to look further you know down below but I guess first we'll start here we'll look at we'll see what the ECM's receiving and then take it from there so we got the cover off the ECM. We had to cut the tape and then the little cover just pops off. So we've got that off at the diagram. It says the crank signal should be B79, light blue with brown. And then this is 73, and that's 96. So 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79. So it's this one here, if that's light blue or brown. And it is sweet, so we got the right connector. So we're gonna actually pierce these because we're gonna take it for a drive. So we're gonna get um, some of our wire piercers, poke a hole in there. Of course, we will fix it before we put it back together. Uh, so there's that one. And then cam sensor two is supposed to be B58. So let's see. All right, now that I've learned how to count, didn't have enough Sesame Street as a kid. All right, so that is dark blue. That is uh, cam signal one, I guess we'll call it. Cam signal two, let me get this right this time, is going to be pin 38, so that should be second row. So that is 24. Let's see here. Yeah, I can never count as soon as I turn the camera on. So that's 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38. And that is a dark blue wire that I got in 38. And it has a brown trace on it, and it is supposed to be dark blue with brown. Look at that. Wire colors match the diagram. It's even better. Let's get this out in the open. All right, dark blue and brown. Come on 
those on here. These are fantastic wire piercers. I'll put a link down in the description if you guys are ever looking for good wire piercers. Which one was it? We said we needed this one here. Mm, I think, let's see, crank sensor, light blue with brown, 79. That's 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79. No, it was this one here. Okay, so we got them all. We're gonna get these hooked up to the scope. See what we have for a signal here and see if we have to take this thing for a drive to get it to drop out, act up, or do whatever it was doing. I had to pull the engine cover off so we could see what cam sensor was what. Uh, the one with the dark blue wire on it. The dark blue for the signal wire, that is the intake. So for your reference, because on OEM diagram, even on the aftermarket color diagram, it just showed cam sensor one, cam sensor two. So we're gonna put channel one on our crank signal, and then uh, the flashlight there it is, and then our dark, our straight dark blue wire, because uh, this is uh, dark blue, dark green. I want our straight dark blue. Our intake we're going to put on channel two because we have a known good waveform for one of these, and I just want to set it up the same. So. So our regular dark blue wire here, which is this one here, we're going to do that as intake. And then our third channel, we'll hook on the exhaust cam signal. Then we'll get our scope set up, we'll get that fired up. We'll see what things look like. All right, so I'll pull the Pico scope up on the screen here for you so you guys can see that. I've got all three channels on, I've got them set at 10 volts. Uh, again, our red trace should be the intake. Blue's going to be the crank and green will be the exhaust. You want to go ahead and fire that up, Jason? Yep. We'll get them up on the screen here and see what things look like, see if we have a signal. All right, and we do. Let's get these arranged on our screen here. Let's get them a little bit. Hang on, I'm being quick happy. All right, let's get some more time here. So it appears we have a good crank signal. Of course, like I said, the engine is cold. I don't know if this is getting goofed up when he, when he drives it or what the story is, but we do have a baseline now. We are going from five volts to ground, as we can see. We do have a, uh, a known good waveform on this vehicle too, so we can check our cam and, and crank the timing. But at this point, we're mostly concerned about this cam signal. So I say at this point, we let it warm up. Uh, we'll take get our Pico scope stuck in the vehicle. We'll take it for a drive, see if perhaps this is dropping out, you know, driving. Uh, I tell you what, we're right here. We'll hop in there and run it up like 2,000 RPMs. We'll see if something. See if something crazy happens. So we're gonna elevate the RPM, see if it does anything to our cam signal. Crank. didn't lose it. Um, well, let's go take it for a shake. So I think what we'll do is we'll go eat lunch. Or I'll eat lunch. I don't know what you guys are doing. Interesting that we have what appears to be a good signal. I did check with our known good and the, our timing appears to be on, give or take, you know, a degree or two. Um, so that's not a concern. Uh, I'm going to call the customer and find out you know, if he's done anything to this or what's happened, when we look at it, it looks like she's not been touched. And then we'll take it out and give her the beans. And I think before we do that, we'll save our codes and stuff so we know what they were. We'll clear the codes, see if they regenerate right away, and know what the ECM is seeing at the same time. Look at this thing. <laughs> oh, hand crank. 
All right, so I'll pull the uh, Pico up here on the screen for you guys. I'll go for a shake. See what it does. Got all the wires running through over here and whatnot. We're about to stay in town here for a little bit just in case it does puke on us because we lose crank sensor. We're going to be walking. Just a little bit, give us some more detail here. All right, let's go. We'll head out to the big road. All right, well, the vehicle just quit. <laughs> We're gonna kind of coast over here, is when we gave it full beans. But I did notice at that point. I should have had the thing recording. Um, at that point, we had good we had good crank signal. All right, so it quit on us. Let's see if it restarts here. That was interesting. So yeah, I gave it full throttle, taking off from that stop sign, and it quit. So let's see if we can duplicate that again. We will stay in town. Well, no, I guess being that it restarts, I guess we can go out of town. <laughs> Easier to pull pull over on the side of 415 here. Do the old California coaster in case it quits again. Alright. Alright, she just quit again, but we see we got we still got cam and crank signal. Huh. That is interesting. Alright. I'll tell you what, we're gonna capture that when it quits. Let's just see the poop and laughter. Oops. So pressure light just coming out. Let's see if it stored any codes. Just out of curiosity. Light didn't come on. Did not store any codes. That is super interesting. Hmm. Back in park, see if it fires back up. Starts right back up. All right, so we're gonna put a lot of time on the screen here. We're gonna capture it during that. Stall. I'm gonna pause the screen. We're gonna get out here. Got her down and dry. That is a pretty interesting uh, little deal it does there. Yeah. Quits and then. See if it has anything to do with this cam and crank signal here. Alright, so we're gonna start the scope. I'm gonna tell you TJ hit that space bar. Let's see. Okay, hit the space bar. Oh, we gotta be able to make it over the bridge. We're in control. <laughs> yes, yeah, so that is pretty interesting. We'll get over the bridge here. 
looking back through our data, guys. There's a big hole in our crank sensor right there where it missed a couple teeth. Um, I guess we can see if it set a code this time. I'm still sitting here just on the other side of the bridge. Yeah, still uh, no codes there. I'm going to flick back through some more of our screen here and see if I see any other anomalies, but I, I seen that right off the bat. Yeah. Hmm, it's pretty interesting. So I want to see if it just dies just revving it up, just sitting here alongside the road. Oh yeah. Okay, let's not drive it anymore. Let's go back to shop before this thing leaves us freaking walking. The engine right. light stayed down at the time to that. Oh, okay, so we got, it. all right, good, we got an engine light now. So let's just see if it threw an intermittent crank code again. Yep, intermittent crank code, so okay. So now we can go back, we'll bring the Pico back up, we'll analyze it and see if we see it, you know, dropping out again. We're just going to head back to the shop. Still got it recording on there. What's interesting is we started it up to take off again. It started running real rough through a PO300, but shut the car off, turned it right back on, and you know that, that cleared up. So you guys can see it through that misfire code there when we just started it. But we'll go back to the shop now, and now that we know we can recreate it in the bay, we'll see if we can't capture what the heck might be going on here. So we're back at the shop. You can see we got a flash and check engine light. The car appears to be running well, just sitting here at an idle. I'm gonna take and give her a, I'll pull your Pico up there so you guys can see. We're gonna give her a rev up tune up and let her stall out. Let me let it fill one screen with data here. <laughs> of course now it's not gonna. <laughs> Maybe we gotta be on our test drive. <laughs> Try it again here. Spot. Holy smokes! <laughs> you stinker. Wait, let me take a shit here. Hold on that computer real quick. I'm gonna take and shut it off, guys. Turn it back on just for the heck of it, just in case it's in a default strategy. Let's just take and you know, not letting it stall, you know, might not be taking the parameters. Let's, um... Take and clear the codes out of it, just to be sure. All right, the engine light's flashing out because the monitors aren't set, so that's what that's for. It's FYI on a Chrysler. All right, let's take and fire it up. All right, let's see what happens now. What a stinker. All right, I gotta go try to capture another stall event. I did not save that one. <laughs> as long as I the road, she has no problem shutting off. Yeah, so here's the deal, made it back to the shop. Oops, shoot. Hey, I got the camera on. That's my foot. Um, oddly enough, I mean, you start it up and just you know, uh, like the old Jeeps and stuff would do, you would just have a flashing check engine light, the thing was running smooth, misfire counters were going, but the thing is, other than that one little glitch that I saw on the crank signal, I haven't seen anything to give any pause to something going on here. Um, I guess I'm not sure at this point. I did a, I reset the adaptive memory on it, and also, I uh, just did an ECU clear just to see if it's, you know, in some kind of logic problem. So we're going to take her for another, another rip. Just out of curiosity, he's got the best of me at this point. You know, being that I saw that glitch in the, in the crank sensor, I'm going to assume it wasn't anything on my end that actually the crank sensor indeed is dropping out of it. Gosh, we were having a hard time making it back, and then, like I say, as soon as we came back to the shop, you just you know you put it in neutral, start it up, engine lights on, flashing. 
but when I was looking at it, I did pull up a math channel on the Pico there to look at the average frequency across that crank signal to see if it was doing something funky I wasn't seeing. And it looked legit, didn't see anything out of the ordinary. Hey, that's my brother. Where he's going? That's some farm tire action, must be. Go chase him down. So let's see, before when we give her full throttle, it would cut right out on us. Huh. It was just a strategy problem, but these Chrysler's and her stupid ECU resets. out there in the mirror just up by if you're hearing that clicking noise but now the thing's running like a champ and prior to doing the ECU reset it was doing it you know every single time you know you know so like say the second you would start it you get flash and check engine light and misfires So I drove around a bit more, uh, thing doesn't miss a beat now. I would feel pretty confident putting a crank sensor in it simply because when we initially had the problem during the first warm up cycle, uh, you know, we seen the glitch in the uh, crank sensor and we also at that point got the, you know, intermittent crank signal code. So uh, I feel pretty confident with that. If we were, um, you know, losing our ground or our five volt reference, we would have either had our signal go high or we would have lost our signal altogether. So I'm not super concerned with getting, you know, to the sensor to do some checks there. Uh, it seemed to be the warmer it got, the worse it got with um, its ability to record misfire counters, which isn't an uncommon problem on Chrysler's uh, that I've seen on older ones. I haven't really experienced it much on these newer ones. Um, but because, like I say, because we had our intermittent problem, you know, we got there off the bat, we saw that. I think I'm going to feel pretty confident putting a crankshaft sensor in this. Um, perhaps when it does that, you know, it throws the intermittent, it somehow screws up the adaptive memory in it where it, you know, adapts the crankshaft speed. I'd have to look into that to see if that's true. And if that's the case, uh, I guess it would make sense about the, um, what do I say, you know, the misfire counter. So... I think I feel good about that. So with all that being said, I'm gonna keep moving on. Gonna call this customer, see if we can get permission to do the crank sensor. Like I say, it looks like a son of a mother to get in there. Uh, it's hiding down behind that power transfer unit. Do a follow up, maybe uh, if I get the job of doing this one, if one of the boys doesn't do it, then uh, I'll record that process, show you what that is. Uh, I see online, a um, few guys are removing the axle shaft and giving it the classic reach around. I don't know, the sucker is buried. So that's it. Let me know what you think down in the comment box. Leave your questions, comments, criticisms, concerns down there. And just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.